Case 3 is a 58-year-old woman with a history of melanoma. Here you see some images from a head CT. I'm going to have some more images here. What you start to see is a little bit of hypointensity in the posterior uh, lobes here. Now you get up a little higher and you have some areas of hyperintensity kind of centrally located within that low density, so some hemorrhage with some surrounding edema. Here you see it a little bit more. It's kind of peripherally located. You get a little higher, you have again some low density. So now a question I'll ask you and I'll ask you to consider in your mind is which side is abnormal here? So we know that the right side is abnormal. We have a hemorrhage with surrounding edema there. But uh, I'll ask you to take a quick look at this left side, see if you think it's abnormal. So here I've given you some images from the MR that kind of gives it away, right? Uh, so you've got some areas of susceptibility effect in the area of the hemorrhage. So that's the hemorrhage you were seeing on CT. Now you have surrounding edema. If you look, you've got some edema on the other side. And you've got this patchy kind of subcortical edema all over the place. Uh, so there's multiple areas of subcortical edema. Probably a little bit of trace of some drill hematoma as well, which might be extension from that parenchymal hemorrhage. Here you see pre and post contrast imaging. Now, what's fascinating about this is so on pre contrast, you don't have a lot of T1 shortening. This image is uh, from a kind of the same level, and you see there's essentially no nodular enhancement there. So, what you'd be looking for in a, for a metastasis in this patient that has a history of melanoma, uh, the vast majority of melanoma metastases are going to enhance. If you had no enhancing lesions, it would be a little bit surprising, although a small enhancing lesion might be obliterated by the blood itself. So we'll go back to that question now. I mean, after you see the MR, then you know that both sides are abnormal. I mean, you definitely have edema on, on both sides, even in areas that don't show gross hemorrhage. So as we think about this case, we have one hemorrhage, but we have a number of other edematous areas. It's cortical and subcortical. It's in a posterior distribution. Uh, this person is 58, and they have this history of melanoma, which was making us think about metastatic disease. But uh, the imaging appearance was certainly unusual for metastatic disease. And so I'll give you another look here. So we have the pre and post contrast. There's definitely no enhancement there, which is very uncommon for melanoma metastases. Uh, however, because of the patient's history of melanoma, this patient has gotten various chemotherapy agents. So that's something you have to think about. Um, so this ended up being a case of acute hypertensive encephalopathy, or PRESS. Uh, this is a disordered uh, autonomic uh, autoregulation. Uh, typically, you'll see it with hypertension. But there's a number of other causes, including medications, many of which are chemotherapy. So if you have a cancer patient or someone who has lymphoma or leukemia, definitely be thinking about that. The imaging appearance that you're going to see is very much like you saw in this case, where you have patchy cortical signal abnormalities subcortical white matter uh, edema. Um, basal ganglia can be abnormal. Uh, they can have associated reduced diffusion. And it's relatively common to see hemorrhage with these. I mean, if you look at them in the books, they'll say it's relatively rare, but I can tell you we see it uh, considerably more than, uh, than you might think. Now, these changes evolve over time, and although it's called a reversible encephalopathy, uh, they don't necessarily resolve completely. Uh, here you see a four-week follow-up on this patient. Uh, all of you have the hemorrhage centrally here is now T2 hyperintense. It's very bright, but a lot of that edema surrounding it has gone down. Now you see a lot of those surrounding areas of edema have resolved. Uh, so the vast majority of the findings here have resolved. Here you see the four-week follow-up pre and post contrast. Now there's a lot of intrinsic T1 hyperintensity there. Uh, there's not much enhancement associated with that, if any at all. And again, you see no other enhancing lesions to suggest that this is metastatic disease. 